OK, so we're just going to explore the difference between masking and clipping and just talk a little bit about clipping and what you would use it for in context of your image editing. So the best way to illustrate this is if I go to File and New, and I'll just create a new A4 document. That's fine. Click OK. Now I'm going to go in with the Rectangle tool and I'll turn snapping on. Just draw out a panoramic shape like so. And then under the stroke options here, we'll just add a small amount of black outline to this rectangle. Okay, so we'll now start adding some images. So I can go to File and Place. And we'll just place some JPEG images here. So I'll choose this one, for example, and just roughly click drag to draw it out to cover that rectangle. Now, this is where the differences between masking and clipping really come into play. So for example, if I wanted to mask the image using the rectangle as the mask, I could click drag the rectangle, offer it up to the image using that vertical blue highlight and drop it in there. Okay, so if I select the rectangle and manipulate it, we can change the shape of the mask, which is all very well and good. We'll just undo that. And then we can select the image and we can also scale the image. So the mask scales with the image. So effectively, in this case, the rectangle is becoming a layer mask. But let's try clipping, which is a different approach. So I can grab the rectangle and drag it out on its own here. And then what we'll do instead is kind of reverse the procedure. So we'll grab the image this time and then click drag and drop it over the rectangle. But crucially this time, we're not going to drop it here, which would turn it into a layer mask. Instead, we're going to drop it here. You'll see the lower blue vertical line and then let go of the mouse. So the image has now become a clipping layer. What does this mean? It means we can just freely manipulate the image inside the rectangle. So we can reposition it to fit the aspect ratio of the rectangle. But the other cool thing about having this as a clipping layer is we can go ahead and select the rectangle. Now, of course, we can move that around as we see fit. We can scale the rectangle. It's not constrained this time unless we hold down the shift modifier and the image will scale with the rectangle. But also what we can do is check lock children here. And that then means we can change the shape of this rectangle to reveal or cover more of the image. So we can change the aspect ratio of the rectangle how we see fit. Okay, and then if we uncheck lock children, we'll then revert back to scaling and moving the image with the rectangle. Okay, so just to clarify, we're currently doing this with vector shapes, which is the rectangle in this case, and images. I'll just drag the image out on its own. So what we've covered with clipping and layer masking very much has a physical representation. You can see the tangible differences. But if I go ahead and place another image, let's choose this one. Just drag it out on the page here. 
We'll also look at clipping and layer masking with adjustments and filters. So if I were to go ahead and add a white balance adjustment, let's just tweak the slider here and you'll see we're affecting both images, which is what we would expect. It's at the top of the layer stack. It's affecting everything else underneath it. But if I were to grab it and offer it up to this image, you'll see the vertical blue highlight here. That's offering it as a layer mask. So now it's only affecting this image rather than that one. And in this case, there is actually no tangible difference between using it as a layer mask or as a clipping layer. So let me just demonstrate. I'll drag this back out so it's affecting both images again. And once again, we'll go ahead and offer it to that image, but this time as a clipping layer. So you'll see it's the longer blue highlight. And we'll see we have exactly the same effect as if we had just added it as a layer mask. So there is no practical difference when you're doing clipping or masking with adjustments and filters, but when you're working with physical information using a clipping approach, especially if you're laying out photographs for print or for presentation, clipping can give you a bit more flexibility about positioning and changing the aspect ratio of your presentational areas. Well, hopefully that's helped a bit to clear up the differences. If you have any questions or queries, please do ask on the official forums and don't forget to watch the other photo video tutorials. Thank you for watching.